Well, good morning. Welcome back to chapel, and it might be the last time that I stand outside and greet you, but it is a beautiful day outside, easy to come in, excited and thankful for all of God's promises and the what he gives us in his blessings, like a beautiful, warm, sunny day in the beginning of November. What a gift. So today for chapel, you guys are talking about a certain story about how God protects Moses throughout the whole week you're talking about this, and, and there's this question as we have this opportunity to come into chapel, reminded that God brings his promises to us, and we have this wonderful opportunity to respond to him, give praise and thanks, and to follow him, and to know that we're called to share joy. And that's really what I was thinking about when I read this question, because that acronym of joy, J is for Jesus first, others second, ourselves third, or last, right? Putting others before ourselves is kind of this idea that teaches us this big, complicated thing of self-sacrifice. And it gets into that with this question, doesn't it? It's another way to talk about that. How can you give away someone or something God has given you even when it's the right thing to do? Complicated question, but we see that take place in our story today when Moses was born as a baby. Interesting stuff. As we get started, I'm going to have you stand for our opening song. I thought it was a good idea today to be reminded that God's in control of all things. As we sing this next song, he's got the whole world in his hands. It's... <laughs> that said he's got everybody here in his hands and we can know that is true for us with certainty because of what God has done for us in baptism. We remember this as we gather in his name, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Please grab a seat and we'll take a look at today's video lesson. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. Ooh. 
This is Moses. Hey Moses was a descendant of Joseph's brother Levi. Hey. Joseph and his brothers had many children and grandchildren who lived happily in Egypt. Eventually, a new pharaoh came to power who knew nothing of Joseph or what he had done. This pharaoh feared the Israelites because there was a great number of them living in Egypt, so he wanted to put a stop to their prosperity. Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves. He made them work long, hard hours building up Egyptian cities. But his plan didn't work, and the Israelites grew more in number and in strength. Eek. So Pharaoh made a rule that no Israelite boy would be allowed to live in Egypt. This is where Moses' story begins. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. Hmm. And she kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. When she saw the basket, hey. she sent her servant to get it. When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, uh. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. Then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. Uh -huh. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so, Moses, an Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. So our chapel verse today kind of points right at to a specific point in that story for us. We can read this together. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a piperous basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Exodus 2, verse 3. What a crazy way for God to act and bring salvation and leading to his people through taking care from, of Moses. We join in song again. We sing the song, I've Got Peace Like a River. Good morning, boys and girls. Today's message is going to require some audience participation, but hold on one second. 
All right. I need you to think of the one thing, and, and we need to do this like silently. I'm sure we've worked on this by now. I know we have in seventh grade, right? Silently. Think of the, the one thing that would be the hardest to give up that you own, okay? Think of the one thing, and, and teachers and, and adults in the room, I'm going to call on you. I'm going to ask you to share that publicly. So think of the, oh, hold on. Mm. Mm. Ah, coffee. Think of that one thing. So, everybody got it in your brain right now? All right, and, and now the audience participation is this. I want you to stand up if it's some sort of electronic thing, some sort of video gaming system, your cell phone, that sort of thing. Okay? Got the, got the older grades. Good, all right, sit down. I want you to stand up if it's uh, some sort of toy you play with a lot. Okay, we've got, okay, a few young ones. The, the thing that would be really hard to give up. All right, have a seat. Um, how about some sort of, like, like, bicycle or skateboard or something like that that would be really hard to live without? Okay, got a few more. All right, have a seat. How about some sort of, like, uh, you know, maybe for the younger kids, a blank, oh, hold on. Mm. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, how about some sort of blanket or stuffed animal? Okay, yeah, all right, that would be good, have a seat. All right, Mr. Doug, what's one item that you would, oh, hold on. Uh, what's one item that would be really hard for you to give up? Your wedding ring. Oh, you're so sanctified. All right, Mrs. Rodman, what's one, are you going to change your answer now? <laughs> what's one item? Maybe your wedding ring. All right. I warned you, there's audience participation. Mrs. Milam, what's one item, one, one thing, it can't be a per, oh, hold on. What's, what's one, what, can't be, it's gotta be one thing, one physical item. Coffee? Uh, who likes coffee? Mrs. Prinzen, how about you? You're gonna say, oh, hold on. Mrs. Gamerick, coffee, all right. Uh, Mrs. Young, what's one item you just, you just can't live without? Coffee. Coffee. All right. Mrs. Hesse over there, one item. Chocolate. Anybody like chocolate? Yeah. All right. Mr. Rose, what's one item you just can't live without? Freedoms. Freedoms. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Lull, where are you? What are you going to say? What's one item you can't live without? Um, warm oh, warm showers. All right. Mrs. Van Dellen, where are you? Heavy weighted blanket on the bed. Ooh, okay. All right. And then I believe Mrs. Johnson, or Miss Johnson, where are you? Your ice skates. Interesting. Okay. All right, and then we got to go, I think, to the middle school. Uh, Mrs. Riley, are you here? I think I saw you come in. Your car. Ooh, all right. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Frazee, are you back there? Your phone. Interesting. Okay. Miss Schultz, are you back there? Coffee. All right. Oh, yeah, hold on. Okay. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Young couldn't live without his golf club. So, yeah, there we go, right? But today's story is about somebody giving something up. You've probably figured out by now, I love coffee. I drink it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. No, it doesn't bother me. I, you know, maybe I've had too much already this morning, but it doesn't bother me when I want to go to sleep, right? There's some great coffee shops in town. I love coffee. Also, we forgot one very important person. Mr. Van Dellen, where are you? Way in the back. What? Your pickup truck. All right. I love coffee. And we all have things we love and things that are important to us. But today in our Bible story, a mom has to give up something that's far more important than coffee or anything else. She has to give up a baby. And if you know anything about how moms love babies, that's a big deal. 
And she has to do it because there's evil in the world and, and Pharaoh's a bad dude and he, he's made some awful decisions. And yet she gives this baby up and she trusts in God and she says, okay, Lord, you, you've called me to give up this thing I love and it's a, it's a really big sacrifice. Giving up something we love is a big sacrifice. And yet she does it. And God protects Moses. And God brings Moses to Pharaoh's court, and and mom still gets to be with him, and it's just an amazing story of God's faithfulness and how he protects us. But boys and girls, one of the things about the Bible is we heard the story, right? We heard the story of God giving uh, Moses' mom this call to give him up and then protecting him. But the story is great because it's not just about that story. It's really about Jesus, right? About how Jesus looked at all of the things he could have in the world, even when the devil tempted him. The devil said, hey, you can have all the video gaming systems and all the power and all the money and all the authority. You can have all of it. And Jesus gave it all up. Jesus says, it's not worth having all of that stuff because I love my people so much, I'm going to give my life up. Jesus sacrificed his life. He gave it up. He gave it away. You see, that's how much Jesus has done for us, right? Think of your most valuable thing in your house. Jesus has given us a hundred times that. Hold on. I really love coffee. My name's Mr. Coffee now. That's great, right? But you see, boys and girls, God loved me so much that he gave up his own life for me. God loves us so much that he protects us through highs and lows, through pandemics and and worries about elections. God loves us so much, and we know that because he gave his son, Jesus. That's who the story's really about. God's going to protect us. He's going to see us through everything, and we trust that because of what he sacrificed for us. Let's go ahead and pray. Hold your hands, bow your heads for a second. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. How, Lord, that you you gave up everything for us. We thank you for protecting us, just as you protected Moses, Lord, in that river. We thank you for guarding and protecting us this school year through all of the things that are going on. We ask that you would bless us and remind us always of your great sacrifice for us, so that, Lord, when you call us to sacrifice for others, we can do it boldly, knowing your love. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now's the time if you've got a chapel offering, you are called to bring it forward at this time. So I think we have one class representative. I think that's, yeah. So come on up. You can bring the chapel offering forward. Let's stand up as we go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for sacrificing your son for us. You're the one who created us and given us everything we need. You've got a plan and purpose for our lives. You invite us to live with you for eternity. Help us to live for you. Help us to want to give you everything you have given us, offering it all back to you with humility and respect. We thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your continued protection and provision for us. Lord, through the midst of a pandemic and an election season, we ask that you would continue to protect us from all harm and danger as we prayed, that you would strengthen our faith and our trust in you, knowing, Lord, that you will see us through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask that your hand would continue to be upon our election here in America where, Lord, the final results don't seem to be in yet. But, Lord, whatever the result, we ask that you would help us trust in you and commend whoever is appointed to lead us over, uh, over us, Lord, that we would commend them to your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for so many who are sick and suffering in some way, and we ask, Lord, that you would heal them according to your fatherly divine goodness and love. 
especially our classmates, Lord, who are out because of everything that is going on. Lord, we pray boldly for an end to this pandemic, whether through a, disease, uh, through a vaccine, Lord, or anything else. We pray bring it to an end quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we take these prayers and all of the prayers that are on our hearts and minds, whether spoken or unspoken, and we sum them up by praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And dear friends, receive God's blessing as we depart. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll stay standing for our closing song.
Amen. Well, I don't think we have any announcements, right? Any last minute announcements? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to have all the classes be seated until the first classes behind you start being dismissed and heading out. Okay. Have a great day and Lord go in peace and serve him. <laughs>